Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining us in the world. My name is Jordan Noonan. I'm a solutions marketer here with Cisco Meraki, and we are super excited to have you on our third of five Bright Talk webinars geared around Meraki and APIs. So today we're going to be discussing uh, how you can innovate with Meraki APIs uh, and how to partner with some of our pre-existing ecosystem solutions to bring your outcomes to the next level. So. Um, before I hand it off to Oren to begin the presentation, I want to talk a little bit about uh, just a few housekeeping items. Uh, this is an interactive platform here on Bright Talk. So as we get into the session, uh, feel free to ask questions using the Q&A uh, function. So go ahead and ask your questions. It's the uh, question mark icon there. So you can leave questions uh, as we go through the session. We'll also have polls going on during the session. So be on the lookout for those and we'll be reviewing those poll results. Uh, and then finally, there is a slight delay on the platform. So by all means, uh, don't be shy when asking your questions, Getting a, get them in earlier rather than later so that we don't end the session and then uh, not see your questions. So please do bear that in mind. We're joined by two uh, experts here today. We've got Oren Brig on the Meraki side that's gonna be joining us. And we've got Tim Ormrod on uh, the ecosystem partner side that's gonna be talking a little bit about a specific solution. So with that being said, I'm gonna hand it over to Oren uh, to begin the talk. Take it away, Oren. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Jordan. So for anyone who does not know me, my name is Oren Brick, and I'm a product manager on the Meraki API developer platform and ecosystem product management team. Um, and before I start talking about our ecosystem, I'd like to share just a tiny fact about myself. Not many people know this, but I actually do not like to work hard. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't work hard. That does mean that I don't necessarily like to work very hard, which means if there's a chance to make my life a bit easier and offload some of the tasks I need to do, I would try to make that happen and make my life slightly, slightly easier. Now, simplifying your life is essentially one of our missions we have at Meraki. We have a very wide platform across wireless switching, networking, security, MDM, IoT with our smart camera as our sensors, everything being managed in a very simple way through the Meraki dashboard. But as part of this series, we're talking mostly about the Meraki API and giving you the ability to automate these processes <clears throat> through, the, through the Meraki API. Um, now, you've seen in this, uh, the session we had before with, uh, with Vasunda, with Shweta, in the coming session with Corey and with John, how you can leverage the API to make things more efficient, to automate your actions, to receive alerts, and uh, make your life simpler. But um, for that, again, thinking about making our lives simpler, um, we essentially have two very different options. So one option would be working with the API based on the documentation, based on, the, based on everything we're sharing throughout this uh, webinar series, and build a solution ourselves. That's me on the right coding into the night on my free time to try to get something to work. On the other hand, what we are able to do is to leverage our ecosystem partner solutions because maybe someone has already created that solution that you're looking for. Whether we're talking about a solution in the IT room or outside of IT. This actually leads us to the agenda of this session. We'll start by, the entire session is going to cover our ecosystem solutions. We'll start by talking about IT relevant solutions, which are very, very familiar and very familiar names from what we know in the IT world. But then we're going to step outside of the IT to the line of businesses and see how we can solve non-IT related challenges and, and achieve business outcomes with our ecosystem solutions. So, if you haven't encountered our ecosystem solutions yet, we have a wonderful site. It's appsapps.meraki.io, or you can Google Meraki, Meraki Ecosystem Marketplace and find all of these solutions. We have over 100 different partner solutions, the 100 different partners on there, and more than 250 different solutions and applications created by those partners. Um, 50 different categories, which you, can, which you can browse, sort, and find a right solution for you. I will give a few tidbits as part of this session. So with that, let's start with our IT solutions on the marketplace. 
And I will start with a quick uh, with a quick poll that I'd love to get back to the answers uh, later on. And that would be, you should see a poll right now on the right-hand side of the screen. How do you place Meraki access points on the floor plans on the Meraki dashboard? So again, how do you place Meraki access points on the floor plans on your Meraki dashboard? If you can answer that, we will get back to your answers shortly. So the first ecosystem solution in the IT room would, uh, I'm going to talk about is our ServiceNow connector. A ServiceNow connector is a connector that we created, we created at Meraki. It connects your Meraki environment with your ServiceNow environment, hence the name connector. What a connector can do is if you're working, if you're working with ServiceNow and you have your Meraki network, we can synchronize the CMDB function of uh, ServiceNow. So you can have all of your Meraki equipment as part of your CMDB on ServiceNow without doing that manually. We can create incidents. So if something happens, if an access point goes down, a network problem, anything is happening on the Meraki side, and you're using ServiceNow for ticket, as a ticketing system and incident management, would be able to create an incident based, based on what's happening on the Meraki size automatically and route it to the relevant, um, to the relevant team to take care of. And um, all of this is enabled by our API. The connector is working with the Meraki API on one, hand, on one hand side and on the service now on the other side. Now, I would like to show you a quick demo of what that looks like. For that, let's go for a full screen. To stress your eyes. And this looks like the following. I skipped the part where we do very connected to because just to skip a minute or two, what you can see here is once we connected the connector with the service now environment, we can see all of the steps that have gone through and see those check marks saying everything, everything has gone uh, has gone okay. Um, so we can see all of the steps here, configuring incidents. And now what I want to show you is going to data sources we can see custom scripts. So we can decide the data coming from different fields on the Meraki side will populate different field on ServiceNow. Another thing I want to show you is just some metrics we do have for the synchronization, where you can see how many synchronization have been happening in the last, uh, in the last hour, how many rows, what's the response time, just to make sure things are working well. And after that, what I want to show you is the through the organization, I want to show you how you can see the Meraki organization we have in the connector, go through that, and then we can go into one of the networks we have on the Meraki network. So let's do the San Francisco one. And here we can see the various Meraki devices, the access points, the cameras, and for each one of those devices, we can see the MAC address, the serial number, and all of the information we want to pull out of the, Mar out of the Meraki automatically. The other thing I want to show you here is the incidents. So that should be around here, sorry, there it is. Um, so with incidents, if something, an AP went down to the Meraki side, we can automatically create an incident for it for ServiceNow where the relevant team would, uh, would take care of that. So with that, very simple integration, it takes just a few minutes to connect it to, and you have a working, working environment with, uh, with ServiceNow and the Meraki dashboard. That, that's Pull the screen back and move on. So that's that's relevant if you have ServiceNow. But well, sometimes not all of you are working with ServiceNow, um, but you would like to get those notifications when something happens. That's why through webhook templates, which Corey will expand uh, will explain and expand about it in his session, we created built-in integrations into, into Cisco WebEx, into Microsoft Teams, into Slack, into PagerDuty, so you can craft your message. And when something happens, whether it's a movement on, on the security camera or a power supply going down, access point uh, going down, whatever accident is happening, we'll send you that message to the relevant notification, notification service of your choice. Again, whether it's WebEx Teams, Slack, PagerDuty, and through webhook templates, which Corey will discuss in his session, uh, you'll be able to integrate it with whatever service you'd like, as long as it can receive webhook alerts. So that's uh, one. 
going back to the poll question, and for that, Jordan, I'll ask for you, if we have, uh, what were the results uh, of that poll? Yeah, sure. So 71, so the question was, how do you place Meraki APs on floor plans? 71% of our respondents said they manually place it in a general location, whereas 14% said they are much more precise in terms of where they're placing it. And then 14% said, what the heck are floor plans? <laughs> Okay, I'm glad that some people chose that option. So, if you're if you're not familiar with the Meraki dashboard, or if you're not, or if you're not uh, using Meraki Wireless, or if you are using Meraki Wireless and you're not not familiar with it, we have an option on the Meraki dashboard to place a floor map of the relevant floors and buildings and sites uh, throughout the dashboard. Throughout the dashboard, and then we can place the access points on those floor paths. That allows us, first of all, if something happens and we need to explain to someone uh, where the access point is located, you can see that very quickly on the map. But then if we use all kinds of location services, such as we would like to find where a certain, um, a certain client is located throughout the building, we want that uh, placement of the access points to be as accurate as possible. Because if the location of the access point is not uh, is not accurate, and we do our triangulation based on that location, we will show you um, a misguided misguided location of the devices. So that's why one of the integ recent integration we have is with Ekahau. If you're not familiar with the name, Ekahau, I think, is the de facto uh, company for all everything that uh, covers wireless site servers. So before you deploy an enterprise network, you probably want to have some measurements, what we call a site survey, and determine what would be the optimal, the optimal location of the various access points throughout the building to ensure you have decent coverage, decent capacity, and, and make sure that the wireless performance will, um, would work as you expect of it. Now, as part of this site survey, you'd be walking around the building with the Echo Sidekick, which is um, equipment that measures all of the Wi-Fi signals that were across it. And, um, and you will walk around, you will upload into Echo a map of the floor, and for it, you will have measurements and different locations throughout the floor where eventually Echo would recommend what would be the best place to place access points. You can, always, you can also do a site survey on an existing deployments after the access points were placed. Now, if you already have the floor plans on the Echo system and, um, and you're doing the measurements and Echo knows very precisely where the access points are located, why do things manually? So what they, it's for the integration we have with Echo, once the access points were placed on their system, you can simply synchronize those locations into Meraki and Echo will, up, will push into the Meraki dashboard both the floor plans themselves as well as the location of the access points. Now with that, once you have more precise location, um, then you can much more, much more accurately find the various clients that you need on the dashboard. If you have, uh, if you're trying to locate a rogue AP placed somewhere in your building or in your facility, it makes it a lot easier because you get a more accurate location of it, uh, as well as location heat maps and any other location-based service you run on top of your network. Because any location would be drive driven through the through the floor maps, and the accuracy of the access points will determine the accuracy of the uh, programs and application consuming that data. So very quick integration between Echo and, Mar and Meraki to make your life easier and not to do, and for the 71% uh, that answer to do, doing it manually, just know there's a better way to do so. You can check out that on the Meraki marketplace. Now, so that would be for wireless. Another section I want to, I want to talk about would be, um, would be monitoring monitoring our, uh, our Meraki network and specifically monitoring all kinds of security events happening on the Meraki side or as, well as any networking side. So we integrated with Datadog, with AlgoSec, with Ovic, with Rapid7, with Perch, with AirEye, SolarWinds, and 160 more names uh, on, on our list. What we do with AlgoSec and uh, what we do with Datadog and what we do with a few other solutions is that Datadog as a SIM system ingests all of the logs and events happening on the Meraki side. And that they will determine based on that, is there something suspicious happening? 
or if you want to use, if you're already using Datadog for data ingestion, you can very quickly add the Meraki information in there and find events uh, just as any other event you're looking across the various IT solution that you have. AlgoSec is a different solution. AlgoSec is a solution that uh, works with the Meraki MX firewalls, as well as Cisco firewalls and third-party firewalls as well. Analyze them, the security policy we have on those firewalls and help you to identify threats, identify um, vulnerabilities in the existing rule base that you have, as well as recommend on how you can optimize the rule base that you have on those on the various platforms and help you transition from one firewall to another by trans translating the rules. They very quickly integrate with the Meraki API to achieve and uh, to analyze the Meraki MX uh, firewall rules and offer you how to optimize them. Rapid7 for um, vulnerability assessment works integrated with Meraki. SolarWinds for monitoring, PERT security. AirEye is a startup uh, with a security solution for wireless networks, monitoring the air. Um, PRTG is a monitoring solution. Firewall, Securonics, and again, many, many, many more solutions that we have on our marketplace. Apps.meraki.io, you can check and find more, uh, more applications, more integration that would be relevant for you. With that, I would like to ask another, to launch another poll and ask you, how do you think retails, retailers with self-checkout cashiers avoid shoplifting? So you probably have gone through, whether it's a duty-free supermarket, or a pharmacy where you have those cashiers. How do you think um, they avoid shoplifting or detect shoplifting in those places? Try to answer that in the poll and we'll get back to that in a few moments. So with that, we have plenty, plenty of different IT solutions on our marketplace. And now what I want to discuss is some of our line of business solutions, solutions that are outside of the room of IT. What we have on, on the Meraki as a platform, we have a lot of data. We have, well, not necessarily big data, but we have a lot of data to share. What's happened? What clients are, are we using? What's the, what's the location that we have? What kind of traffic um, uh, customers, uh, customers are using? Group based uh, location, location, and so on. What we can do with line of business is really we have partners that are taking all of that data, refine that, and take the data relevant to their specific use case to drive business value out of it. So that would be perhaps marketing solutions, um, AI and M ML analytics, leveraging the Meraki cameras, for example, improved experience, improved customer experience, and, and automation. Again, just like I started with, instead of you building everything yourself, there might be an ecosystem partner out there that already created a solution that you don't need to build all by yourself. And with that, I want to show a few examples of solutions that you didn't necessarily think would be relevant for Meraki. The first one, the first category, would be access control. You probably, um, for those of you who are still uh, getting to the offices every once in a while and not uh, entirely working entirely remote, you might remember these cards that you need to swipe as part of, uh, as you go through the doors of the, of the various buildings. And those systems are, um, the legacy systems for access control have some of the challenges that we at Meraki try to solve. Um, they usually require um, to be administrative, administered locally with local username and password, uh, which is in many cases admin admin or something like that. And in that case, when an employee, when someone on this, from the security office is uh, being terminated, or laid off, then you probably will remember that admin admin or whatever password you use across the systems, which would create a vulnerability and uh, where anyone can just hack the hack the, um, the access control system and get inside undetected. If we want to have the, these systems connected through video surveillance to the directory services to that my card is associated with my Active Directory login, uh, or to communication tools, you know, to report when something is happening, usually that is very complex integration and very expensive integration. 
let alone integration that needs to be done over and over again for each one of the locally uh, administered machines that we have in each one of our sites. Um, then we have the problem of making sure that the software release on all of those uh, diff different access control systems are running the same, uh, the same software, if it's even the same vendor, and let alone something on about the uh, model the deployment. So those are legacy systems. And systems that are out in the market today allow a, a bit of a different uh, experience using them. Let's jump to full screen again. So this is what the experience could look like with the more modern experience. We all, if there's one thing we do not leave at home, is our phone. And we have various solutions where you can just swipe your phone or show your phone or just carry your phone with you. The uh, door will already detect you, understand, okay, this is Oren, he's allowed to get in here. And usually again, I will not, while I might forget my card at home, the phone is something I probably won't forget. On this Meraki Marketplace, we have three different solutions offering access control. That would be Kisi, Genia, and OpenPath. Different, uh, different feature for uh, each and every one of them. But what we do, the integration we have with them is, uh, is for example, connecting the Meraki world with the physical security world. So if we on the Meraki side have our uh, door open sensors, and we, can inter and we can integrate with those systems. And when a door is opened without a card being swapped, we can generate an alert about that. If uh, there is a camera watching a certain door, we can, uh, we can make sure, or we can uh, send to the security officer, we can send a photo of the person entering the door versus the directed photo of the person that owns the card, just to make sure there's an alignment between the two. We do not, on Meraki, we do not do face recognition, so we won't verify that that's the real person, but that's something a security officer could, uh, could easily do. Let alone when it comes to forensics and just checking an event that happened in the past, having that uh, very quick linkage between a door opening event and a video feed for it make, uh, makes the life of the security officers much, much, much easier. Second, uh, second uh, thing I want to cover here is loss prevention. So with that, uh, Jordan, I want to uh, look back to you and about uh, ask about the results of the poll on, um, on shoplifting. Yeah, so 18% um, uh, believes that they will trust their customers. So how do retailers with self-checkout avoid shoplifting? 18% believe they will trust their customers. 0% say that staff are watching the customers and 81% say that technology are watching the customers. Okay, that's very very interesting statistic. The, the fact that we have zero percent on staff uh, on staff watching customers is interesting. I've been in several places where there's just a person uh, just looking over, trying to make sure that people are doing the thing. So, so as funny as it might sound, uh, this still exists. So, what can we do with our partners when it comes to loss prevention? I'll provide. We have a few more, but I'll talk about three different solutions we have on the marketplace. One solution is by a uh, ecosystem partner called Every Angle, another one by MeldCX, and a third one by Agilence. So what Every Angle is doing, Every Angle, the, the name suggests, but they integrate with, with our Meraki cameras. And what they can offer is to, what they offer to place a camera directly on top or a, a camera that can take a shot of the point of sales of those self-checkout uh, machines. Using machine learning, they can identify the various items going through the cashier, and they can make sure that no item, that there is an alignment between the items passing the video feed and a line actually being registered on the point of sale. So if you try to uh, mistakenly avoid moving a piece of um, uh, one of the items through the scanner, this uh, solution would be able to highlight it and uh, to, let, to let the security know that something uh, fishy has happened. Uh, over time, you can understand what's happening, how it's happening, and improve the security practices to make sure that does not, uh, that does not happen anymore. So that's, uh, that's every angle. MelCX took a different approach uh, for, the same, for the same challenge, and they, uh, they use AI and machine learning on cameras throughout the store 
they can, one of the solution can recognize and identify what is the customer sentiment and the customer journey. So like what, what is that path they do throughout the store? And what is, um, if their face is visible, so they will recognize whether um, the customer looks happy, angry, or uh, other things. And another thing they're able to do is to detect suspicious behavior by customers touring the store. So if, for example, if and if I don't see the product or something that would raise suspicion, if you, for example, nod your head a lot of time. So like, let's say you want to steal a piece of something from a store and you just look around several times, that would be recognized by the system as suspicious behavior, which they can flag. Um, so very interesting um, customer sentiment. Would, they can still, the, uh, they can offer, they can say that this is a, this would be a man between the age of 35 to 45 and he's acting suspicious with a certain product. If they can actually, if the, the camera can actually see a person taking a product, putting it inside a bag of clothing, it would be able to alert about that as well. So very interesting things to look at. Agilence is a third solution, uh, a third solution that we have on that place. They actually integrate tightly with a point of sale system and they, they can recognize, um, they can alert about um, inventory being depleted. They can recognize based on, they can recognize all kind of, um, let's call it unauthorized or uh, suspicious activity on the point of sale. So if, for example, an employee is trying to take to return an item with no customer on the other side of the other aisle just to take cash back, that would cause that would be considered a suspicious activity and that's something they can flag. Now, obviously there's a lot more to say about each one of those solutions, but uh, in uh, in the essence of time, we'll move on. Again, feel free to either contact us or watch the ecosystem marketplace to check out these solutions and more. Uh, the next session I want to talk about would be sustainability. This is something we all care deeply about, uh, whether it's because of the rising prices of electricity or just in order to keep our planet so that our children and grandchildren can have a decent place to live in. Um, with that, I want to ask the third poll for the day, and that would be, what would be the electricity bill for one single Meraki access point over a year. How much would it cost to power one single access point over, a, uh, over an entire year? Um, I'll give you a chance to respond to that. And as you do, a few, uh, a few data points about sustainability. 62% of companies today believe that investment in IT technologies are very, very or extremely important to reach sustainability. So essentially, they look at us on the IT side to help make, uh, make the company more sustainable. Whether that because of all of a sudden IT enabled hybrid work, the fact that we can deliver this webinar over, over video and you don't need to travel all the way to San Francisco to watch, to watch me, uh, is, saves a lot, of, a lot of cost, a lot of carbon emission and others. Um, so with that, let's talk about a few of, the, of our sustainability related solutions on the market. The first one I want to talk about is called um, SES ImagerTag. You probably have been to a supermarket, talking about the self-checkout self before, and in most supermarkets, we still have these stickers, whether it's on the product themselves or on the, uh, on the shelves, saying what is, what is the price of every single product that we have there. What Imagine, uh, SES ImagerTag provides is a digital solution to replace all of those stickers, all of those pieces of paper with a digital, with a digital paper solution, which is very, very low on, um, on power consumption, uh, which, would show the which would show the price of each and every one of the products. So instead of printing out over and over again, a piece of paper with the details, every single time a price changes, and every single time when there is a new discount coming out across dozens, hundreds, thousands of different branches that a supermarket could have, uh, could have maybe let alone if we're talking about different languages, different locations, uh, that's a lot of paper and a lot of waste and a lot of, and a lot of um, 
uh, guests and cooperation for just tr getting those pieces of paper to travel all, up, all across the country. So they have a solution to have it electronically. That means that from a central place, you can control all of the various labels all across the branches. There are three success stories of Meraki and SES Magitag with, uh, with co-op, with mattress firm, and with uh, Fenac Doherty, all uh, are available uh, on our website. And, um, and that's one way, of, uh, one way of saving paper and waste. Another way, and that would be for us returning to the uh, question about the access point. What, uh, Jordan, can you, what were the answers on that poll? 50% said- Just before I do the math. Yeah, 50% said $3 for a year to power a Meraki AP, 25% 30, said $30, and 25% said $100. And luckily, 0% said uh, we need to pay for electricity, so. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, surprisingly enough, a few years back before sustainability was become a priority like it is today, I remember talking about it with uh, some of my customer and they said, but yeah, but we, we're not, we're IT, we're not the one paying, or that's the, the electricity bill is a problem with someone else. That has changed in, uh, in the recent years. And I'm glad so, because it's our responsibility to at least ensure in our little piece of land, in our little piece of responsibility to do what we can. So let's do a bit of math. I took one of my access points I have at home. It, it's just an MR42, just Wi-Fi 5, not Wi-Fi 6, which, remind, which reminds me I need to upgrade it soon. And that would consume somewhere between eight and a half to 10 watts of power. Now, over 24 hours, 10 watts becomes um, 240 watts hour. And that becomes, for one year, that becomes 87.6 kilowatts hour. And with the, current with the current price, at least in California, of 35 cents per kilowatt, that turns into about $30 a year per access point. Which also means that is $3,000 per 100 access points and 30,000 for every 1,000 access points. So even though a single access point is not a lot of money, when you do the math and when we, we look at customers highly distributed across hundreds and thousands of sites with hundreds of um, with hundreds or thousands of access points and much more, it becomes a uh, it becomes a significant uh, a significant expense. Now with that, we have several so ecosystem partner solutions that tackle that exact uh, that exact problem. So. First one I want to mention is DNA or devnetapps.io as opposed to DevNet Cisco. We have DevNet Apps. And DevNet Apps is a UK company. They created a solution to monitor, automate, and decarbonize uh, Meraki networks, starting with Meraki, moving to other places as well. And what they created is, first of all, a report showing the impact analysis of what they can do for our customers. And what our customers sometimes we know this, or we just gone through the math of how much a single access point would cost. Um, I think 25% of people answering said that it would cost $100, 25% said it would cost $3, uh, where the truth was somewhere in between 50% 50, 50 got it uh, right. So being able to show management what is the impact is important because then you're coming in with data, you're coming in with numbers and just not just estimations and uh, stuff like that. What we have on Meraki, we have the uh, powering over time. We are able to show you that data. What DNA have done uh, is two things. First of all, they took the data and visualized that so that you can show what is the current cost of keeping everything on. And then they can do a what if analysis. So what if we turn off our access points throughout the weekend and during the night when no one's actually using them? So they had that with a customer with one uh, with 1102 wireless access points, getting about nine watts, uh, nine watts each across 72 sites. And you can see here that once they're limited to instead of 168 hours per week to 72 hours per week, they're able to save uh, 25,000 um, pounds and 10.42 10 tons of CO2 emission. So, crazy math. Uh, 
And what's interesting is the way they created, uh, how they do it. So here, let's jump into a quick demo of what that solution looked like. So here they have the system, their system. Um, they created a policy, a port scheduling policy called um, A to six because can you play? sorry, because you, as you can imagine, it works between eight o'clock and six o'clock. If it decide, thank you very much. And I just decided not to cooperate. Okay, so eight through six, they can create a policy. They can change it. They can click now. Next thing is clicking discover on the Meraki on their um, on their UI. That will pull the data from Meraki and show how many access points, how many ports are there, what was their power consumption, and then. Second part is now that we see the consumption, how much money we're spending on electricity, then we can relevant network, we can tag them with a tag called eight till six, which will say to the system, okay, these are networks where I want to, sorry, where I want to implement the port scheduling. So this is eight for six, and then it will, it will implement it and configure the ports and associate the various ports to that port scheduling. And after doing so, we'll ask for a permit to, it will ask us to agree. I see for some reason the reason is not, is not cooperating with me, but uh, afterwards it will show exactly what is the impact of those, of implementing that, um, that policy. And throughout the day, it will make sure as things change and we might be disconnecting, disconnecting access points or connecting new access points, it will be able to detect that and update the ports according. So you have, uh, so once you can make a decision, a data driven decision about what time uh, do you need the access point to be on or off in the various location, you can implement that and save some money on electricity, carbon emission, and so on. The third solution I want to talk about is uh, another partner, which is called MPRO5. MPRO5 is uh, yet another partner integrating with our IoT, IoT solutions. Um, what they do is usually smart data centers. So they integrate tightly with our Meraki cameras and our Meraki sensors. So that would be for the uh, flood detection, temperature changes, door open and close. And if you have hot and cold aisles, they'll be able to detect something is wrong in the temperature of a certain rack here or there. And the interesting thing with Emperor 5 is that they have a um, mobile application. So if something is wrong, they create an incident, which is sent through their, their application to the relevant facility or maintenance person that needs to take care of that. And through the app, they will uh, mark, the, uh, mark the issues results, enter all of the data, and have this closed loop. So it's not only Meraki detects something is wrong, they'll have all of the, um, they will have all of the information, what was wrong, was it taken care of or not. And, um, and with that, first of all, I would like to thank you very much for sticking up with me. And I would like to present a special guest that we have with us, uh, Tim Omra from Splash Access to talk about a bit what we're doing in the partnership with Splash Access and a bit about the new solution that they have on our marketplace. Uh, Tim, over to you. Cool, thank you very much indeed, Aaron. Uh, I'm just gonna share my screen and hopefully that will come through. We've got you, we can see your screen around. Excellent. All right, thanks very much, Aaron. It's always great to hear uh, what's going on at Cisco Meraki, and Owen's done a great job there filling this in about the API and the ecosystem and uh, a lot of the partners. And we're lucky enough to be one of those partners. Uh, we've been creating solutions now that uh, utilize the APIs uh, for 11 years, and that's a long time. So we started off 11 years ago when there were only literally two or three little things that we could do to create solutions for our particular clients. And we started off specializes in captive portals, solutions that you all know about, uh, very simple solutions, but very powerful solutions that maximize the APIs to be able to do basic tasks, to authorize users onto networks, and then also allows you to capture that information so we can start to build tasks. We can push it into different applications. We can do lots of things with the data. So who are we? 
We're a small company. We're based over here in the UK, so hopefully you'll understand uh, my strange English accent. Um, and we, we've been building these API endpoints and these integrations uh, to deliver solutions that work for clients. And we've been lucky because now we have literally 650 plus clients all over the globe. We have clients with one access point and clients are upwards of, uh, you know, 10,000, 12,000 access points. And where we fit in is, like Aaron was saying, we have the capabilities to have off-the-shelf solutions. So you don't need to build your own. And that's where we've been adding value to what Meraki already does incredibly well. We have those ability to, you know, fill the holes in for different clients, for authentication, for linking into Azure. That's another big ask at the moment. How can I link into Azure, which we've solved the problem. Uh, and on that page there, which you can see in front of you, you can see that little icon at the top. We're incredibly proud to be the Meraki API All-Stars. And to be first, we were the first. Uh, and this is a award that Meraki has brought out for the people who are creating solutions that are making difference in the ecosystem and in the marketplace. So we're proud to be a partner and to be proud to be having that award on our uh, on our website. So... Obviously, we're maximizing what we do with APIs. And Meraki is an amazing company, and they are an API-first company. So everything you see on the dashboard, they try and make out that there's an API endpoint for you to be able to manipulate that command, that little bit of a slider on the Meraki dashboard. You can do the same command over in the API. And that's given us the power to do lots of different things. And Splash Pages, we've taken that to the next step now. So as well as utilizing standard Splash, which is utilizing XCAP and a very basic API call, we're now going through and creating really complex calls, utilizing them endpoints to do manipulation of authentication onto the users, onto the networks. So still doing that authentication system through captive portals, but now taking it to the next level, simply because of the power of those APIs and what Meraki is giving us access to. We also do Wi-Fi analytics, and Wi-Fi analytics is a slightly different data input that, or data output that Meraki is sending us, a CMX feed. Lots of great data. Like Aaron was saying, there's a lot of data that can get and you can collect from the Meraki. We consume that data. And what we try and do with Splash Access is give you the core information that makes it worthwhile. Dwell times. Yeah, if you can pull out and integrate a CMX feed to get dwell times out of your existing ecosystem. Yeah, that is a big tick in the box to be able to give to your management or to push to management to make defined decisions. So utilizing Wi-Fi analytics does have a great place in certain sectors. Owen made a, a, I showed you quite a few partners there for analytics, camera analytics. We as well have a very, uh, very powerful solution for cameras. It's not uh, as... Um, uh, is feature rich as some of the clients out there, such as Every Angle. But what we're doing at Splash Access is again maximizing the APIs that Meraki give us to give a core function that is ticking the box for the majority of clients. So we have got a very powerful camera system, again, maximizing those API endpoints. So, guest Wi Fi, it's our core product. We have different types of guest Wi-Fi, and this is just manipulating a very simple API endpoint to authenticate the users. But then we're taking it to the next level. One of the things that we started doing now is integrating and adding in Azure Active Directory into the Captive Portal page. And again, utilizing the APIs to be able to rotate WPA2 keys. So instead of the secretary handing out a piece of paper with the WPA2 key of the day, we can actually put that in a digital display, or we can put that into a, uh, a device that prints it off in a piece of paper. So we again, tying in Meraki's world to the physical world and into the digital world, all through Splash Access and the API endpoints. A lot of our clients come to us with a core request. Can you capture data? And that's what we do incredibly well. It's what we do after that. So we have here, for example, Toolstation, which is a nice client based here in the UK. And they have around about six, 700 access points on the solution. But simply by having a captive portal and integrating with the API endpoints, we're collecting roughly, I think, around about five or 6,000 unique data points going into their CRM system every single week. So it's a really powerful solution for capturing data that leverages on top of the investment that's been made into Cisco Meraki. And we are very lucky to have some incredibly 
great clients all over the world utilizing Splash Access. Yeah, you know, Starbucks, uh, Ted Baker, Tiffany & Co., Moldova, uh, McDonald's, all these clients come to us for great implementation. And then also adding on that a little bit extra. What else can you do with this API endpoint? How can you do additional functionality? And that's where we really excel. What else can we do? And this is where we can actually twist the captive portals to insert and do something spectacular with the API endpoints. And again, integration. It's all about how we can take the Meraki API, integrate it into Splash, and then push it out into third-party applications as well. So we can that be that little cog in the middle, yeah, and we can push it into absolutely anything. And the power of the API, the integration, that's where we can really excel and make that difference in Meraki's world to add those little extras that everybody keeps on looking at. And that's down to that Meraki API first that we've been talking about. I see CRM integrations. And again, this is that little cog in the wheel that actually is very important. A lot of people now, they need that data, but they also need it in their systems that they have access to already. So when a client comes to me, they'll say to me, oh, can you put this in our sales force? So we're linking the Meraki system, the APIs that are running with Meraki into the real world in Salesforce to make decisions that the management can take in relation to how many people have been in a location, how many people have signed up to guest Wi-Fi, how many people are repeat purchasing. And that information then can be tied into the POS and a lot more. And then when you start adding in the cameras, then it becomes a little bit more exciting. So lots of functionality, lots of integration, and we're layering on top of everything we do. Now, obviously, captive portals is our bread and butter, but then we started to go into different areas, and it's all about authentication. So we have some of the biggest clients in the world, education, retail, hospitality, corporate, who are utilizing the system and come to us on a daily basis saying, how can you manipulate the APIs? What else can you do? And they could do a lot of the stuff themselves, but they chose to come to us and they choose to come to us because we have a good understanding of how to make it work in the real world. And we develop and we develop only for Cisco and Meraki. We don't work for anybody else. And that makes us different because we understand, one, the requirements of the users, but two, how we can very quickly turn things around into the solutions that work for clients. We're a small team. We're not a big team. We're four people. But Meraki's APIs allow us to basically deliver a solution that works to 650, 700 clients, millions of user connections and lots of different analytical systems. We love the analytical system and the amount of data we get out of Meraki. All those endpoints give us a lot of information. Wife Analytics is super. Yes, the CMX feed, it gives us a lot of powerful data. And we have a complete dashboard. Uh, and this dashboard is solely geared up to the CMX feed. So we can actually pull in dwell times, user data, uh, how many people went from store one to store two, all in real time, all pulling back off the data that we've collected from the CMX and calculating that data into a actionable in bit of information. Cameras, and Oren showed you some great solutions for cameras out there, and there is. And the, you know, the marketplace has got great solutions, and we're just another one of those solutions, and we painted a slightly different way, and we've gone down a different avenue. And that's the great thing about the marketplace as well. If I go and do something, I actually pass it on to my other marketplace uh, uh, friends, because they are friends, and we pass things along between us because we want to deliver solutions that work for the client, and that's important. So we have got camera analytics, and we have a great solution that does some great basic solutions. Yeah, how many people came into a location? Which direction did they go? How many people are going in particular zones? And again, what we chose to do is maximize the APIs that Meraki give us to get out core data that makes a difference for particular clients. So camera analytics is that area that is actually taking and making a lot of growth. There's a lot of exciting things coming through with the cameras. Meraki is making leaps and bounds with the AI, and this is now coming through, and we're making the maximized opportunity with those API endpoints. So camera analytics, great bit of information that you can pull down. And again, there's lots of data endpoints that you can maximize. Now, one other area that I want to just touch on as well is the MT sensors. Because the MT sensors came out probably around about a year, year and a half ago now. And there's some great things on the marketplace there. We created a solution ourselves. This is actually for a kindergarten. 
And they came to us and said, look, Tim, we want to be able to have an all-in-one display and we want to have it in the reception. So when one of the teachers presses the button, yeah, we can actually send somebody to that classroom to pick up a child. It's a simple task, but we started to build that out for that particular client. So we created an Android application and within that Android application, it's always on, it creates alerts, and then we lay it on top. And we started utilizing the webhooks because the webhooks are that powerful little uh, nugget that Meraki created that allows us to pick out real-time events. And it's very underrated. So webhooks, is, for me, is a really important feature that Meraki have uh, created. So we can take that webhook, we can consume it, and then we can start to link things in with it. So what we've done within this dashboard, for example, is when somebody presses the MT30 button and we get the alert, we can say, okay, somebody needs to go to that particular classroom, but then if nobody creates the action or sees the action, we'll play an audio alert, and then we'll send a text message, and then we'll change the color, and then we'll play it louder. And then obviously at some point, that particular alert is actioned. But also then we can start to go into really clever things. We can actually utilize the API to link to the button press and pull out the camera image from the camera next to that particular button. Or if somebody opened the door from the sensors on the door, we can do exactly the same action. And then one of the schools said to us, wouldn't it be cool if you can sense if the door's been left open? So we started building that application into the solution. And this is where a lot of our ideas come from. They come from our customers or people who are looking for solutions that don't have time to build themselves, who want to utilize expertise and our expertise to create a simple solution that solves their problem. And that's where both us as uh, ecosystem partners and Cisco Meraki with the APIs that they give us access for allow us to do that. You know, buttons, sensors, it's really exciting what Meraki is creating and all the opportunities that we get as ecosystem partners and the opportunity you guys, because at the end of the day, you can build your own. You can utilize them endpoints just the same as what I do, but also you can literally say, you know what, I'm going to take it off the shelf. And this is where us as Splash Asha Access can help and fit in. So I think I've just got up to 10 minutes there, so I'm going to hopefully send it back to Oren. Yeah, and uh, I think the guys are going to finish off. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Tim. And, and Oren, if you wouldn't mind just bringing up that last slide uh, for us here. I think we don't have any sure. Q&A available, um, but it looks like we did have a lot of good interaction with the polling. Um, we've done a, a quite a long session here today, so I want to thank both of you gentlemen as well. And then, Oren, uh, if you want to get involved a little bit more, uh, we have some links here. Also, on the right side of your Bright Talk panel, if you go to the attachment section, um, there's a, a series of links and attachments that you can take advantage of. Uh, we've got the presentation from today posted on there. We've got some links to the ecosystem. We've got some links to the previous Bright Talk webinars that we've done. So please do check those out. Uh, and with that being said, I'll, I'll end it for today. And thank you so much for your time. Cheers. Wonderful. I want just uh, just one last sentence from my side, really just re getting back to what I said at the beginning. Before you start working hard and creating your solution, two places you should check just before that would be um, the ecosystem marketplace and the DevNet code exchange. Maybe someone has already created that piece of code that you're looking for and you don't need to build it yourself. So if you have a chance to work not as hard as you can, go for it. Cheers. And yeah, we have a QR code here. This will bring you right to the Meraki.com website if you want to request more of a live catered demo or get your hands on some free trial hardware. Um, by all means, check us out at Meraki.com. And again, thank you for uh, sharing your limited time with us here today. And we'll see you for the next Bright Talk webinar. Cheers. Bye.